folks, my name is Damien Aranji and I'm a Principal Engineering Technologist here at Dell Technologies within our Global Engineering Outreach Organization. If you found this demo video through my blog, then welcome. If not, I highly recommend taking a few minutes to read through this blog. I've left a link in the description below. It covers the features, functionalities and the installation process of the multipath driver, which will give you a solid foundation before diving into this quick demo. So let's start with a quick recap. Firstly, what is the multipath driver for Powerscale? So Dell Technologies has developed a multipath client driver that allows you to aggregate the performance of multiple Powerscale nodes through a single NFS mount point. It's straightforward in concept, but the details are where the real value lies here. So this multipath driver can offer significant performance benefits in scenarios such as workloads involving streaming reads and writes to and from high performance servers, situations where an NFS client is approaching the maximum throughput of a single node, streaming reads or writes to multiple files within a single NFS mount, and finally, and probably most importantly, NVIDIA SuperBot or BasePod AI workloads. Let's quickly talk about the three options provided by this driver. So firstly, we have a new mount option, which is called Remote Ports. The purpose of this option is to allow NFS clients to target multiple servers or network interface cards simultaneously. So the benefits are here are we have increased bandwidth and throughput, low balancing across sev several NICs, improved fault tolerance if one path fails, others can take over. So the implementation here, uh, it creates multiple file handles to the NFS share, one for each server NIC combination, avoiding the typical lock thrashing that could occur with a single file handle. Secondly, we have the modified NConnect option. So the background here is the NConnect option in NFS controls the number of connections used for a mount. And the change here being that again, the default behavior of NConnect is modified in this driver. So unlike the standard Linux implementation, which might collapse connections and reduce the number of active connections under certain circumstances, this driver will prevent such behavior. Again, the benefits here, we maintain the specified number of connections and this ensures consistent performance and avoids potential bottlenecks caused by unexpectedly uh, reducing the overall connection count. Thirdly, we have RDMA support with both options. So with the end connect option and the uh, remote port option. Uh, so the driver adds this RDMA support, making it compatible. The benefits here can significantly enhance NFS performance by reducing latency and CPU overhead, particularly for large file transfers or high throughput workloads. So for this demo, I'm going to be following the fantastic guide by Nick Trimby, which you can find on the Dell InfoHub site. Again, I'll leave a link in the description below. We'll cover the installation and setup on a single Ubuntu host. So this will be a simple setup just to get our feet wet today, where we'll establish a single NFS connection to a PowerScale endpoint over eight TCP sockets using the NConnect option. In future videos, we'll expand on this by exploring additional options like the remote ports and integrating the RDMA uh, features and functionalities to target multiple power scale endpoints. So with that, let's get started. Okay, so I've logged into our Ubuntu host and I've gone ahead and downloaded the drivers from the Dell support website. The drivers also contains the installation instructions as well, or you could check out the info hub guide as well, either or. So I've copied the driver package over to my home directory. So firstly, we're just gonna set up some NFS uh, helper functions, which is outlined in the installation instructions as well. So nfs-kernel-server, so we'll do an apt install on that. And once that's completed, we'll be ready to unzip the um, driver folder and actually go ahead and build the driver. Once we build a driver, we can install the actual .deb uh, package. Okay, so let's just unzip this um, file quickly.
Okay, just sped that up, so that's done. So let's cd into that Dell NFS client driver directory. If we do an ls there, we can see we've got a couple of scripts. So we're going to do the build.sh script first. So that's actually going to build the uh, kernel modules for us. And now we can go ahead and actually run the build-deb.sh script command and that will build the uh, Debian package which will us allow us to install the driver. Okay so that's done now. So if we cd into the disk directory we'll see now it's actually built a.deb uh, package for us and we use the apt install command and that'll go ahead and actually install the driver uh, for us on this Linux host. So this is the multipath driver so that's three steps. Uh, the NFS helper functions, uh, build the kernel modules from scratch, uh, and then actually install the driver. Okay, so now I'm just running a final command, which is uh, once the driver is installed successfully, which we can see here, I just we're just going to update the actual kernel. And now if we run the D PKG command, we can see that the kernel module is actually installed and running correctly here which is great. So we'll go ahead and reboot the host and it should automatically be working for us after reboot. Okay, just logging back in there. Um, if we run the command lnfs-ctl status, we can see the multipath driver is ready to go. So firstly, I'm just gonna jump over to the power scale array and create a standard NFS mount, um, just to make sure that everything is working correctly just with, with no options. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and do a second one where we'll use the end connect option. So we have a test directory here that I've created in the file system explorer. So we'll go to protocols, NFS. So we'll just make sure that we've added our IP address there, which we have. So we should be able to go ahead and actually create a directory. So I'll call this NFS share standard, and we should be able to mount uh, our NFS directory in there. Okay, so that's mounted successfully. So let's just run a quick df minus h command and, and grep for that. So we can see our, our standard share is, is mapped in there. So let's just go ahead and, and touch a new file and make sure everything is working okay. So we're not using the multipath driver here yet. I'm just, just verifying functionality after the driver installation. So what we'll do now is jump back to the PowerScale array. And um, if we go to File System Explorer again, I've created a new, uh, a new directory called Test Multipath. This is the, the directory that I'm going to be um, exporting and then connecting to that using the Multipath driver. So again, we'll create a new export here. Let's give the path name uh, test-multipath and we'll add our client uh, IP address in here as well. Okay, let's just create that export and now we can jump back to our SSH session on our Ubuntu host. Let's create a new directory again. We'll call this one NFS share multipath and let's mount into that directory. And this time we'll use NFS version 4.1 and we'll use the end connect equals eight option. So we wanna basically create eight TCP connections to uh, that directory. So if we use DF, DF minus H again, we can see we've got a standard share and we've also got the, the share uh, using a multipath driver. So let's quickly create a, just touch a new file there to make sure everything's working okay. Okay, that's great. So what we can go ahead and do now is I've done a, uh, a quick test. We wanna, we wanna write to that directory, send some IO at it. So I'm using the command stress ng, and you can see the path is my NFS share using the multipath driver. So that's kicked off. So we'll go over onto the PowerScale array now and actually look at the incoming connections on that. So I'm using the ISI NSF4, uh, command 
And I've just highlighted it there. You can see that we've got eight connections that are being maintained, um, which is fantastic. So they, they, don't, they don't get torn down with this modified driver. So we've got eight TCP connections coming into the PowerScale array from this uh, Ubuntu host, which is giving us much more throughput. So thank you for your time today. This is just briefly covered the installation uh, and the setup of the uh, multipath driver. We'll be creating more videos in the future, uh, specifically around the nConnect option, where we can target multiple IP addresses and endpoints on the PowerScale array. Um, and we'll do that using RDMA. Thank you for your time. Talk to you all soon.